On today's special episode of Homeworthy, we've rounded up six of our favorite home libraries handpicked by our editors. From libraries in Oceanside Estates to the chicest apartments, these home studies will surely make you want to curl up with a good book and a hot cup of tea. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. When I was talking about being so fortunate as to find all these treasures, whether it's a mantle or the wormy chestnut boards. Um, I was at church one morning and this older couple who were dear friends of ours, um, she said, well, I, I hear you're building. Uh, do you need any library paneling? And I said, well, I, yes, I, I think we would. She said, well, I've had some in storage for 37 years from my parents' house up around Brown in Providence. And um, she said, I, we'd love for you all to have it. Now this is Honduran mahogany, the kind that you can't get anymore. And coincidentally, the, their library and their home in Providence had been about this size. And all of this had come out of their home. The, the, the baseboard, the sideboards right here, as you see, right here, all the way up to here. We did the door surrounds because um, of the, the height of the doors. But it just, it gives new meaning to recycling. And every time we walk in here, of course, we spend a lot of time here. It's the library. We have dinner, the two of us, right there every night. We always think of this couple and who are no longer with us. We created this bar because but this just is right there and it's hidden and, and you don't even know about it until you open it up. What is Betty Pardee's drink of choice? Champagne. <laughs> I didn't hesitate, did I? No. <laughs> this is another thing. You know, I keep talking about entertaining, but um, I'm such a flower person and love it just love bringing the garden in and in, in, in as many different ways as I can. And while I adore a fire and a roaring fire during the winter when we're here, I don't like that big black hole in the summer when it's sunny out and everything. So I finally said, this will be the reason that I will come up with something that will sit there for the summer. These are begonias, a beautiful shade of begonias with a, with a sort of, um, plummy and the little seafoam green inside. And we put them in a, a um, copper, big copper container. And I picked up the clematis, which is the same color, and the blues of the delphinium that pick up this color down here. So you've got this correspondence between something that had never been here before and something that I've been doing on a regular basis when they come into bloom. So. This is probably one of the most exciting things that I did in getting ready for this shoot was finally identifying something to put in the black hole of a fireplace during the summer. So this is the library. This is one of a number of rooms that are crammed with um, books. Uh, I have a that's sort of my weakness. And I finally went to Kindle because my house was reaching critical mass. This portrait was painted of me when I was 25 and pregnant with my middle son by a wonderful watercolor artist named Alan Blagden, who lives in Connecticut. And tell them about the cat box in the corner. Oh yeah, the cat, the lovely cat box is in the corner because I have a fabulous Himalayan cat who's hiding from the pit bull upstairs somewhere. And uh, it's, he decided when we first moved back here that he didn't want to use the nice kitty litter box in the bathroom upstairs, but he wanted to go in the corner. So now there's a, <laughs> now there's a kitty litter box in the library. I run an um, Instagram blog with my family called A Social Life, where I'm constantly taking pictures of my wife and my kids in kind of uh, funny Slim Aarons esque Wes Anderson-esque uh, situations. Um, so I definitely remember 
a photo like that in here. This is the one room that really hasn't changed since she had it, other than pictures, different pictures hung. But this is really exactly the way she decorated it in 1968. She had, um, one of the best collections in America, probably, of anti-slavery um, art, artifacts and, and pictures, and, and it's, it's really extraordinary, and I've been trying to figure out who to uh, donate it to. Uh, it was during the Kennedy administration, and um, she went to a costume party with um, full leotard tights. One side was black, one side was white, and everybody's going, what are you? She said, I'm integration. <laughs> I've never heard that story. You haven't? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love this. Uh, oh, this the chicken. You should definitely get the rooster. <laughs> this was the kind of uh, whimsical touches that we both like to add. In, in the house in Washington, uh, Albert Hadley did the house, and but it never looked decorated because there were always thousands of books lying around and little objects and, you know, nothing nothing was perfect, but it was lovely. Well, that's the other thing. I photograph a lot of interiors and there's a lot of interiors in, in my book. And to me, it's really important that things aren't overstyled, that they look lived in and they look natural. There's no, nothing I hate more than a room that looks like, you know, a stylist came in and, you know, put everything perfectly where it goes. Like, like we I, did this morning, <laughs> no, before you got here. Well, I think there's curated, uncurated, right? So, you know, uh, just not. I, my goal was just to make it look not like a. We should have taken. Mess. We should have taken before and after pictures. <laughs>this was originally the primary bedroom of this apartment. But if you're like me, you spend most of your time at your desk working. So I turned this actually into my library only because this room has great exposure. It has another terrace off of this room. It's a little bit shallower, but it has those wonderful iron French doors. So I positioned my desk to face out towards those. And then this beautiful little urban oasis is how I, I describe it. I designed this uh, banquette seating area for a lot of my projects. And I love to sit here, you know, to work on my laptop computer. It's like being on a sofa, but you can do some work from it. Also, one of my greatest tricks in interior design is actually to make a uh, Persian carpet look like it's more antique than it actually is, is to actually put it on its backside. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to always go to these, these rug auctions and I would see the carpets all rolled backwards and I would always love the way the carpets looked on the back and in the front. So here you go. This is actually my, this is my carpet. And look how, look at the difference. You know, this is what it is on the main side, but look how much more fine and antique it looks on the back side. So it's actually a great trick. <laughs> if you ever want to make something a little bit more subtle, if you have a Persian rug, that's the best way to do it. So I love my French doors the way that they are, and I didn't want to have any window treatments on them. But in the mornings when I have direct sunlight, I actually come here with this little piece of fabric, which I had my seamstress, um, you know, make out for me. And it's basically a Roman shed that's attached with a, with a piece of Velcro. So when you have direct sunlight and you don't want to have a, uh, a window treatment that's permanent, but it's a great little trick, so you use a little bit of Velcro and voila, this is my desk area. And then I built these two cabinets very formally to sort of anchor the room. I always wanted a red room for myself, but red is actually a very tricky color. It could be very severe. It can be very hard, you know, to be in a red room all the time. So I really wanted something that was friendly and had a little bit of personality and a little bit uplifting. So this color is actually more towards an orange. Uh, so I actually uh, mixed my own two colors, this Fiery Opal and Dragon's Blood, which I mixed together. These are my little sketches. Um, everyone that knows me on Instagram, it's Garrow K Designs. If you don't follow me, please follow me. Um, I always post these, these different options for all my projects and everybody loves to comment on them. So I usually do two or three layouts per room for all my, all my clients and projects. And then I always post those sketches online. It's always so much fun. And tell me about your pencil collection. Oh yes. The concept is that whenever you have an idea, you have to have a pencil nearby so that you can write down uh, your thoughts. And, and that happened mostly at my bedside. I keep my pencils by my bed. So at night when I'm like sleeping, have insomnia, I have an idea, I always write it down so that, I, so that it lets, lets me get to sleep. <laughs> Thank you.
follow me into the study this way. There's a lot to see in here. Everyone loves this room um, that comes over here. It's one of my favorite rooms. This is where I spend a lot of time in the morning doing emails and phone calls before heading to the office. Um, this room was actually a third bedroom in the house and this large cased opening was not here. Uh, it had a tiny door with some tiny ugly closets in here and an ugly fan. Um, I knew I needed another public sitting room basically um, for more chairs. So anyway, I created this big cypress opening to match the others you'll see later on in the house tour. So there are three large cypress openings in the house and they, what they do is they really separate the house functionally and, and they, they sort of bring you through. So one's here, there's one that goes to a guest, a guest suite basically. And then the third one separates the dining room to the more casual parts of the house, the kitchen, family room. Um, which we'll explore a little bit later on. Um, but this room I love because the only thing <laughs> I told my finished carpenter was that I don't care how big these bookcases end up, they have to fit this pull-out sofa, which is a sofa bed for when my niece and nephew come, and these plaster shell inserts that I literally dragged off of a job site 20 years ago and put in the trunk of my car and they have been in storage and follow me around forever. So finally, finally, they have a permanent home here. Uh, so those were the things I started with with this room and then everything else kind of grew organically. I've been trying to figure out what this is for a very long time. This was something that my sister and I fought over at an estate sale. So it ended up in her place for a long time. And then I think her children got scared of it. So here it is now. Um, it's an old Chinese piece. It's silk. It's hand painted. I believe it is some sort of Chinese allegory. If anybody knows anything about it after watching this, please let me know. I'd love to know. Um, but it's incredibly beautiful. I've always loved the colors in this piece. I love the scale of it. And I knew immediately this is where it needed to go. I mean, really, this is the best spot for it. The wall color is unique. It's Faro and Ball Churlish Green. And it looks, it's sort of a funny color. It changes throughout the day, but I never tire of it and I love it. And it really does play off some of the greens and browns in the living room because these two rooms are really visually connected. Um, another fabulous find from Grandma's house is this mid century black and gold embossed um, armchair. This is another thing that um, I coveted for a long time. But this actually did come with me to New York and this was in my other condo as well. So it'll come with me everywhere. I love it. I never sit in it, but <laughs> it's sentimental value. Um, other good things about this room. Here's lots of, lots of animal moments here. Rug, pillow, another pillow. This chandelier is a 1920s pewter chandelier. This really makes this room, um, well, one of the things that make this room, I love the chandelier. This chandelier will come with me wherever I go. I found that here in New Orleans at a local antique shop, Mac Maison, knew I had to have it. And um, I tried to corral a lot of landscapes in this room just because they just felt natural in here. Um, so this is a great piece from auction. I just love the abstracted trees. And then these two mid-century pieces are um, James La Mancha. He's a mid-century artist and he was a professor of architecture at Tulane for a number of years. So I have a couple of his. Whenever I see them come up for auction, I try to grab them. I have three now. Um, they're all, these are just actually Roman, um, Roman landscapes, which I love. I have an affinity for Rome because I studied architecture there for a year in school. This was one of the pieces that I was talking about that sort of came to me, this black lacquer desk. I knew I always wanted one and it came up for auction pretty much immediately after I thought, okay, now it's time to find the black lacquer desk. And here it is now. Um, I always like a little bit of black as well with my animal prints. Um, this is sort of a new addition to this room. I needed something comfortable to sit in. Um, this is in Timothy Corrigan's Schumacher line. I think it's Schumacher. Um, 
Anjou Stripe. I remembered it, but it's fabulous. I just love the scale, love the pattern. Um, <laughs> the pull-out sofa actually is a cast off from a client and I had some old curtains from another condo and here they are. So it's very sound of music. Um, you know, curtains to not outfits, but upholstery. This is my library. Um, there's one wall of books, but it's, uh, my many years of collecting animal prints. Most of them are crooked at the moment, but um, it actually started here with this Jersey cow. I, was at, I went to a boarding school in Massachusetts and one night we were out late beyond when we should have been out and I saw this on a barn and it was propped up against the side and was in terrible disrepair. So I took it, which I shouldn't have done but I did, and it's always been one of my favorite things. Uh, it was in my room at school, college. It's been with me since 1974. I just love it. Um, but that sort of started this whole collecting. Um, there was a young, there were a couple up in uh, Manchester, Vermont, who had a lot of these prints, and they probably are just from books, but. You know, they're just, everything's been added to it since. You know, this needlework, this is one of Apple Bartlett's little um, decoupage. That's from a dealer in London. People have given me these things over the years. This is a little drawing by a cousin of mine. Um, so I just collect them. Um, things that I love, anything to do with animals. This is a sculpture which I've, been meaning to have a base made for by Bruno Romeda that I loved. I bought in the 1980s. I just love this work. I've always wanted to get it higher so you look through it going down the stairs. Um, this cat Albert gave me. Um, it was next to his bed. I just, I've always loved it. And I just, you know, I collect things, anything. Little brass animals. That lamp has the tiger on it. It was something I gave to my ex-husband, you can see everything now, I've run out of, running out of wall space, so I'm hang, starting to hang things on, on the bookcases. I mean, there's this wonderful woman named Sarah Battle in England who makes these little decoupage pieces. So I think there's one, two, three, I think there are four of them that I have. I just love her work. And, you know, I've had that creature forever and then I found the owl lanterns and then I found a second one at a yard sale and this is another one of those cats like I have in the living room but you know everything sort of finds a home I just shove it in a shelf and I have a thing for owls so I've got two there and one there and those two they are one up there anyway but I just anything to do with animals I always love um, I love this seal. He was um, belonged to a client, and she gave him to me a few years ago when she sold her house, made by John. Mm, I'm blanking on his name, but I just think he's so sweet. Um, but you know, I just mix everything up. I mean, inexpensive little wicker elephant, the table that you know was Gary Hager's at Parish Hadley that I love. And my giraffe, I know. Isn't he wonderful? He's been with me a long time, too. I think I got him when my youngest was a little girl, and he was in their room, and, you know, no one thought it was fun to take him off to college or to their first apartment, but I was happy to have him with me. Um, I've always loved this. You know, usually you see these garden stools, and they're made of to look like elephants, but this one's a rhinoceros, so I've always loved him. Um, this is a rug made. Albert Hadley always had a lot of the needle uh, hooked zebra rugs. Um, this is one of them from his collection. So as you can see, I mean, there's a cow hooked rug, and here's a whale, and it's just endless, you know, endless animals in this house. <laughs> These mice, uh, 
I don't remember what year it was, but Parrish Hadley did a table setting for uh, American Ballet Theater, and we were all had one afternoon where we painted these mice. Um, there were, I don't know how many of them, but they were on the tables, and they held up, somehow, and I don't remember how, they held up a, bo um, a bowl of nuts on every table. That was the centerpiece. And so we had little skirts made for them, and I don't know, I just, you know, the, they just have sentimental value to me. You know, a funny butter dish my daughter gave me, and you know, this is a chicken that was one of the first things I, uh, Mrs. Parrish's daughter, Apple, made it for um, a show house I did in Far Hills, New Jersey, with Malcolm Forbes, something to do with Malcolm Forbes, I don't even remember now but many, many years ago. You know, I keep things. I, I'm a pack rat. That cockatiel um, weather vane was from Mario Buada's collection again. It was at Sotheby's, and there was such interest in his sale that I think they called me at 11.30 to say it was up. And I got it for nothing because everyone had gone to sleep. But I just thought it was kind of wonderful. Those valances actually um, I had made uh, for the Kipps Bay show house room I did um, and they're the metal they're tin and they were made by an auto body shop um, and then painted by Chuck Fisher who's a wonderful decorative artist um, to match the wallpaper which is in my front hall but it was that Sue Ellen wallpaper with the stars was the wallpaper used on the walls there and this is I love this these flowers by Livia Chetty who does owns that company the green vase that makes all the wonderful paper flowers I've actually taken a couple of courses of hers I love her things now we're going to go into my husband's study which was formerly the guest bedroom and um, in this room, again, I have bookcases with some of his books. The, uh, he still has room. I always try and leave room for him to add books because he has, you'll see there are books on chairs and he just, he, he loves that. So uh, another green velvet sofa because you can't go wrong with them. And uh, we did these uh, chairs that are replicas of the chairs that were on FDR's uh, yacht, the Sequoia, when he was president. And I covered them in these, uh, this fabric with the ferns because I'm, again, I love ferns. And then this room to me is really special. It's very masculine. I love coming in here. There are pieces in here, uh, my father was, career military, I think I may have mentioned that, and, and um, he, was, uh, he was an amazing man, and uh, so I have a lot of his pieces, like this one, that were, uh, these were awards that were given to him, and uh, presentations from different countries, and uh, we have them spread kind of around the room, and those are matchbooks that he picked up from different places all over the world. And uh, so it just, I really love that, that the two men that are the most important men in my life are kind of combined in this room. Because this building faces, our apartment faces the west side of the building. We use these uh, wonderful natural fiber uh, shades that block the heat and the light when it's real bright in here. So uh, those with the, we did just the, I left these curtains. They were curtains that were in here before and I think they look great with this. They're pretty muted. And then back here I have this beautiful Chinese chest that uh, is topped with uh, green wear that you'll see in the morning room that I have a big collection of. But uh, and then one of my friend Wynn Morton's uh, uh, lanterns. And then, you know, the, I love the columns. We did the columns and I put the big gazing balls 
on top of those just because I thought it added a little light and you know, it gives the illusion of more height in this room. These ceilings are eight and a half feet tall, so they're not uh, vast ceilings. And um, then the rest of this is, you know, all, uh, this was Wynn Morton's, this was his wingback chair and I had it recovered and my husband should have seen his face when he saw this trim. <laughs> but I love it and we call it Mopsy. And um, then I have, uh, a pair of these uh, antique leather footstools. One's an elephant, one's a donkey over here. And uh, then some, This I guess this is the only new piece of art. These other pieces are all pieces that we've had forever. Those are Jay Gould pieces. A TV is just a normal part of life anymore. It's almost like a cell phone. And most people want a large television. I would rather just have something beautiful like we did here to set the TV on and it, it is what it is. It's, it, you're gonna have a television, you want it to have comfortable seating and my husband loves to sit in here and watch a game and this piece is one of my favorite pieces. Again, I did not have a place for this when I bought it. It is from the 1970s and it's a tessellated horn console and it has these uh, little drawers in it that uh, are uh, trimmed in brass and it also has a matching mirror that I don't have hung. But uh, it's the perfect size for this television set. The only place I would not want a television, I would not, we don't do televisions in bedrooms, we discourage that. Uh, for a number of health reasons and just sort of general sense of, of calm. But, uh, you know, I think if you've got a room that you prefer to, to sit in, that's the best place to put a television. We don't have to have a television in every single room. Uh, it's, it, especially if they're these big monsters like these. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.